So this is uh, Pradeep Chinala. I am the MVP for 2023. And along with me today, we have uh, Vinu, Lahiru and uh, Shubham. Uh, they can clarify your doubts on the chart. If you get any doubts in the middle of the session, you can uh, ask through the chart so we can go with it. So uh, today's the session is uh, day three of uh, document understanding. From past two days, we have learned so much about document understanding. So day session one is covered by Mukesh Kala and session two is covered by Vinu. So in these two sessions are uh, like uh, very well. Uh, we have covered so many things related to the document understanding. <coughs> Uh, again today uh, we are going to discuss about the document understanding process and I am going to showcase one kind of uh, demo on it. So how we are using the attended automation in document understanding. So let me go to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, before starting the document understanding, so I want to know a bit more from you guys like what is the document understanding so already we have covered two sessions related to the document understanding so why it is useful in our rpa industry in ua path so we can able to see here a couple of things so we can see the checkboxes we can see the uh, rotated documents and various file formats and low quality scanned documents and variety of templates and handwritten documents so what document understanding will do so it is a process of extracting the doc, uh, data from different kinds of documents like whichever the documents will get it we may get the document in the format of mail we may get the documents in the form of uh, pdf or jpg format any format what it will do document understanding use it to read the data and extract the data based on our criteria and we can import the data to the any of the uh, third party applications or end end tools uh, so this is the way document understanding is going to work on it so uh, this is the high level of document understanding so before going to the next slide i want to know like if you are doing the documents related stuff what kind of challenges you may get so i am expecting uh, some kind of comments here like if you are not going to implement the document understanding, if you are doing the same work in the manual way in your office or in your uh, personal work, so what kind of challenges you may face? So let me go to the comments. Like yeah, by using document understanding, we can train our ML model. Uh, so no. that... uh, my question is like, what kind of challenges you may get? Like if, if you are not using the document understanding, so if you want to uh, process a couple of documents, so like you want to read the documents and you need to enter the data in any one of the application or you want to keep it somewhere. So what kind of challenges you will get as a manual work? So first of all, if it is not a native text, we need to put a large amount of manual work. Yes. So considering a text or some image we are taking, just we need to do copy and again we should see and we need to put it. That is a big task. Yes. So that might happen and human error also can happen. Yes. And uh, it's based upon number of uh, invoices. Just consider a huge volume of tasks to be done by a single person, and it also it's a big challenge. Like considering one to two documents is fine, Got but it. a person who takes care of large volume of documents, he might be facing a uh, lot of issues. Got it. Yeah. And any other comments? when we are doing the same process through the manual what kind of challenges we may get it so we got scanned pdf difficult to extract yes and multiple documents type in one single pdf okay human error so time this time. kind of yes time consuming if you have a bulk amount of documents if one person is uh, manually entering that extracting the data and export importing the data to any of the applications means it will take much time so if the bulk amount of data means uh, it will take a huge time. So let me go to the next slide. So here we can able to see what kind of uh, challenges we may get when we are doing the document processing. So uh, manually extract, interpret, act upon and verifying the document types and quality. And because if you are getting different kinds of uh, documents, it is very difficult to extract the data. And uh, cost and time consuming, we know. So if we have bulk amount of uh, invoices or bulk amount of receipts, so it will take too much of time to uh, enter the data, right? Extracting the data from our documents. So it will be a cost also for us. And human error, and if, we, if some error is happening, we have to do the rework and these losses may happen. 
and a lack of end to end complex solution lack of end to end solutions means if you are doing the work as a manual work so one person will do extracting the data from pdf by by manual and he will enter the data into the excel so again one more person will extract the data from the excel and import the data into the any third party application or target application so here we are not able to see the end to end processing by the one person right so this is a kind of a lack of complex solution so these many challenges we may get when we are doing the uh, manual work manually doing the document processing so for these all the things we have a solution so whichever the challenges we have discussed as of now we can incorporate that particular challenges using our document understanding so these all are the steps i have uh, mentioned it here so based on the manual work so here see delegation to robots using ai to understand the documents so if you are having uh, if you are having the data in the documents so we can uh, assign the robots that robot should be designed in the form of document understanding so what it will do it will extract it will communicate with that particular uh, source files and it will extract the data and variety of uh, documents so if you are having variety of documents means uh, if you are able to extract the data means that's well and good if you are not able to extract the data means uh, we can make the human in loop means human can do the validation and the we can increase the confidence of the particular models also like one of the example is i have one report card so we are uh, prepared the model for it to extract the data so for but we got 90 pdf 90 report cards in the same format but other 10 reports got in different format so what it will do our ml model will extract 90 per 90 of reports and other 10 reports will move to the action center or present validation station so there human in the loop will come and he can do the validation and he can do the submit so by default whichever the data he submitted it it will enter through the target application and the model will be the model confidence will be increased based on the new templates and and the next one is cost and time consuming we know so how the robot is how robot is very uh, fast so we can now uh, we can like if you are doing the manual work for 10 minutes the robot can do it in the two minutes so these kind of uh, the time efficiency and uh, cost efficiency will get it when you are implementing with the rpa and human loss human error and rework losses so we know a uh, robot will not take any rest uh, it will do the process very accurate so we can uh, give the solution in the format of document understanding and lack of end-to-end -end complex solutions so if you are uh, i gave you one of the example right so how end-to-end -end process will work like getting the source data to that providing the data to the target application so we have a couple of steps in between these two phases right so these all are the phases will be done by the our document understanding so it is a kind of end-to-end -end solution for the end-to-end -end solution for the documents uh, processing so is uh, everyone is uh, good with these particular uh, things or do you have any questions regarding it yeah let me go to the next slide yeah so as of now we have discussed it uh what is document understanding and what kind of challenges we may get if we are doing it manually and how we are extracting the uh doc data using document understanding to face that particular challenges right so if you are uh, do if you are going to do the process in the document understanding we should know what kind of documents should our document understanding will accept so here based on the documents uh, we have categorized the documents in the three formats one is structured documents and uh, semi structured documents unstructured documents so here uh, i have we have one question like all our documents itself all are going to use by the document understanding itself everything is going to uh, applied in the target application itself but why we need to categorize in these three formats so here the for that question answer is like so for each type of document we need to apply different kind of mechanisms to read the data so so for the structured documents we can apply different kinds of mechanism and semi structured documents we have to apply different kinds of mechanism in the document understanding and in the same way for unstructured we have to apply uh, different kinds of uh, mechanism 
So uh, how we have categorized these documents means, so when you see the structure documents, it is a kind of ID card here we can able to see. So uh, like forms, passport, license, uh, time sheet. So these all are having fixed template. So these particular things will come as a, a structured document. So uh, semi-structured documents is like invoices, uh, receipts, uh, purchase order, medical bills. So uh, semi-structured means the template would be the same as uh, structured documents, but the line of line of number of line items may change. Like if you are going to the medical shop, if I buy some medicine like one qu one quantity of medicine. So I'll get only one line item, right? So if you are going to the same medicine, the entire template will be same. If you are buying 10 quantity of medicine, the line items may vary, but the entire template will be same. So this is one kind of example for uh, semi-structured documents. And last one is unstructured documents. So unstructured documents means, so we can't get any template. So it's a data, we'll get it in the format of PDF or if you are sending a mail, uh, let me uh, phrase in some other way. So you are going to apply, apply the leave for tomorrow. So uh, we have 10 employees. If everyone is going to send a mail for the leave, so everyone will send, send a mail in the different format, right? So the way of they are expressing in the mail that is different, but the agenda is same. Everyone is going to apply the leave, but the leave format they are sending a mail is different. So that kind of things will come under the unstructured documents. Uh, we have a couple of examples also here, like uh, contracts, agreements, uh, email, uh, scripts, uh, drug prescriptions and news because these values are not fixed format and it's a kind of uh, free form. So they can send it in any way. We have to read it and we have to understand the data to extract it. So uh, based on these formats, we have to use the different kinds of mechanism. So based on the mechanism, we have the uh, licensing cards. So that's the reason uh, before going to uh, process our documents, we need to identify which document structured is it. So if it is a structured or if it is a semi-structured or if it is unstructured, we need to figure it out. Uh, then we need to go with the present. Uh, we, then we need to go with the uh, development of that particular process. So uh, just uh, here I am going to give high cap, uh, just, uh, uh, just I'm going to give the end-to-end -end, uh, intelligent document processing solution. So how will it work end-to-end? -end? So what is the source and what is the end point and how it is working on the, between these two things. So uh, what the major stages has three. So receiving the documents, second one is understanding it and third one is act. So receive is like, we'll get the data in the format of different sources. We may get in the form of uh, mails. We may get in the format of different languages, various templates and different uh, tables. These all are will come under the receive. Receive is kind of uh, getting the input data to processing into the document understanding. So understanding. So understanding is uh, based on the documents. So in the receive, we may have different kinds of uh, documents, structured, unstructured and uh, semi-structured. Uh, based on that documents, we have to understand it. So that understanding will have a uh, major roles of uh, communication mining and document understanding. So once you are understanding it, so we have to act. So once you are able to extract it 100%, then we have to apply that into the uh, target application. If you are not able to extract it major contents, then what we have to do, we have to make it as a human in the loop. So what it will do, human can see that particular document which we are not able to read the data as we expected confidence so he can do the validation and he can do the submit so this is the high level of end-to-end -end, uh, document processing will work yeah. so uh, in this slide we we have discussed about the document understanding right so in this document understanding we have different kinds of phases so each phase will work in the different format to ex uh, to end the extraction of the document process. So I'm going to explain each process, how it is going to work in the document understanding. Yeah. 
so uh, here you can able to see uh, document understanding so when you are working on the document understanding uh, i have one question like if we don't have any document understanding we don't have any concept of document understanding then if someone gave the task to read the data from this part one of the document and enter the data in any one of the application so what are the things will you do as a human so first thing what we have to do i'll open that particular uh, input file then what i'll do uh, i'll check i'll ask him like who gave uh, work to me i'll ask him uh, which all are the fields do i need to read it from this document then i'll check is that fields are available or not in the input file then i'll read that data i'll copy that particular fields and i'll paste it somewhere then uh, i'll uh, you can read it and you can check it is that particular if you get any other document we have to check it so if we gave amazon document to read it but after some time he gave some power bill to read it means you can't read it right we have to do the classification only amazon documents only i can read it then you can extract it then what you will do once you are read the data you can import that you can apply the data into any one of the application right so how manual steps are going on in the same way document um, document understanding was built so we have the same step how we are doing it manually we have built at the same steps in the document understanding to do the process so here uh, i'll uh, this is the first wizard what we are going to do it that is a uh, load taxonomy so load taxonomy means what is it going to do which all are the fields we are going to extract it from the source file we need to identify that particular fields we need to create a template so uh, if you have uh, five pages of document you want to read only first name last name and date and purchase order means we have to create only four fields in the taxonomy that is the creation of the template then uh, doing the digitization digitization means converting the data so uh, whichever the input files we got it that files will be in the form of scanned or native or different kinds of format right so what we are going to do we are going to convert that uh, scanned data to the string format of data which is understandable for the machine so we are going to convert the data in the format of string using digitization so when you are going to use the digitization we have one of the feature to convert that scanned data to the string format of data that is ocr optical optical character recognition so what it will do it will extract the data and it will use a uh, document we have different kinds of ocrs like omni page ocr document understanding ocr and we have microsoft uh, modi ocr different kinds of ocrs we have it so whichever the ocr is giving accurate values to you you can use that o ocrs and you can get the data in the format of text so okay uh, i can able to identify the fields and i can able to get the data into the text format then what we have to do we have to do the classification so whichever the source file we got it is that source file is in scope of file or not in scope of file or not means we are doing for one project that project should contain only purchase order so instead of purchase order if you are getting some kind of other pdf moved into that particular folder so what we are going to do so we have to do the classify we have to uh, segregate it and we have to inform the business saying this is out of scope of a document which we cannot extract using our document understanding because we have not prepared our model for it so our load taxonomy having four uh, items right four uh, we have created the template with the four items like first name last name and p1 number and date if these values are not available in uh, whichever the pdf we got it we can't read it right so there we have to do the segregation and uh, extraction so if you got the uh, exact pdf then we can do the extraction so uh, let me go back to the classification classification so if you are going to the classification we have different client different kinds of classifiers so i am going to cover that classifiers in the next slides so once you are done with the classify then what we are going to do we have to extract the data so whichever the data we have it in that input source we are going to extract that data then we are entering that data to the we are kind of exporting that data to the any any excel csv files or any if you want to export 
to the any target application, we can export it. So uh, these all are the uh, major stages we have it in the document understanding. But here we have train and validate. Train and validate. Why these phases are came here means. So as I said, classification is a kind of segregation, right? So if you are considering only nine, uh, nine PDF, nine formats of PDF in your classification, if you are getting the 10th format of PDF, what it will do? It won't. Uh, it will stop it will kind of give an exception like it is not under our classification right so at that time what we have to do if you want to review that particular of documents we can review it using human so that he can review it and he can send it to the extract format and in the same way in the extraction also if you want to if you are not able to extract it means 100 per based on your contents human can do the validation and human can enter the data there and he can directly send it to the export so this is a kind of uh, human in the loop uh, we are doing it if you are not able to do the classification for any of the pdf uh, before sending a mail we can cross by cross verify with the user one so that we can do it and the same way extraction also so if you are not able to extract any of the field so directly sending it to the uh, csv or excel we have a chance uh, we have a choice uh, to cross verify with the user so this is a high level of re framework uh, we have it yeah so uh, here i am going to explain each step like uh, we have different phases of uh, different stages in document understanding right so how we are going to uh, do each phase in document understanding to uh, done the end to end uh, document processing automation so here you can able to see uh, taxonomy as i said uh, taxonomy used to uh, create a template so here you can able to see the template right so doc uh, these are the values uh, created so based on these values we can get the we can get the values from the uh, source file so let me move. yeah so here is the uh, taxonomy so when you are open, uh, when you are doing the taxonomy, we have uh, this is a wizard we have to create in the taxonomy. So once you are done with the taxonomy, taxonomy just is for uh, creating the which are the fields you are going to read. It. So the next step is. Digitize. Digitize, as we discuss, uh, digitize can be done in the format of uh, converting the OCR. Uh, scan data to the uh, text format of data so when you are working on the uh, digitize so here you can able to see we have to pass the input uh, that input is a document path so whichever the document we are providing it so we have to provide that particular path to the digitization so that particular digitization will give the output as document text and document object model so document text will have the entire data of entire data of uh, whichever the input file we have it and doc document object model will give the positions and the details related to it. So document ana layout analysis. Yeah, so this is uh, related to the uh, digitized document. So uh, as I said in the digitization, we have different kinds of uh, OCRs we can use it omni page ocr we can use it document understanding ocr we have it in the market we have third party ocrs also so based on our requirement uh, which ocr is giving the uh, more accurate results to us so we can uh, we can read it we can use that particular ocr and we can read it so uh, next one is uh, classify classify as i said so if you are having different kinds of uh, sets of documents invoices purchase orders received unrelated documents so how we are going to read the data so for invoices we have to we have to differentiate how we are going to read it for the purchase order the way of extracting the data is different for the receipt the data is reading the data is different right so uh, that's uh, here in the classification that's what we are doing it once we got the input source data we are going to read that data and we are going to do the classification for it once the classification is done we are processing to the extraction stage uh, 
So based on the classification result, it will do the process of extraction. So uh, when you come to the uh, classification station, so this is for the digitized. So we are passing the document path and based on that we'll get two things. So here in the SNP, we are using the document understanding goes here. So the next activity is uh, classifying the document scope. So here uh, what we are doing is uh, we are we have to pass the two parameters as an input. One parameter is a document path and one parameter as a document text and uh, DOM and taxonomy. So where we are getting these uh, fields document path will get it as a source file and doc text will get it as an output of uh, digitization scene document text and document object model also will get it from the digitization itself and taxonomy taxonomy is a output of taxonomy wizard we have created in the first first stage so this is the way classification station will get will we can see so these are the fields we need to fill uh, for the classification station so here we are passing the taxonomy and document path text uh, dom and from the classification station, we'll get one of the result that is uh, doc classification results. So this is uh, here we are uh, using the keyword based classifier. Uh, this classification also we can do it in the different way. Like we have different kinds of classifiers available like keyword based classifier and uh, intelligent keyword based classifier. So whichever uh, suits to your project we have to choose that particular uh, classifier and we can extract the data not extracting the data we can classify we can do the segregation of a particular source file so here is the example keyword based classifier and here one more example is uh, intelligent keyword classifier so input is uh, learning we whichever the file we have it we have to pass that uh, file of it the json file and here also intelligent keyword classifier so and when you see the classification here you can able to see the wizard so this is a configure classifier right so this is a wizard we can get it so that wizard will have different kinds of uh, classifier. Like if in the same classification, you want to use two classifiers. If you want to use keyword based classifier and if you want to use intelligent keyword based classifier, we can use the both. Just we need to tick on it. Here you can able to observe invoice is for a keyword based classifier and receipt is for intelligent keyword classifier. So I said, right, how the way they are getting the value, like if the PDF is received, then this particular thing will work. If the PDF is invoiced, this particular keyword classifier will work. See, so the next phase is uh, validating the classification of uh, documents. So validating the classification of results means, as I said, if you are getting unrelated documents, which we have it in our project. So what we have to do, we have to do the classification for it. So this is what the classification we are doing it here. So we need to identify the uh, particular document, which we got it. So here we can able to see uh, try and classify its scope. Uh, just give me one minute. Yeah, let me reshare my screen. So here we are doing the train classifier scope. So to make the train classifier scope, we need to pass uh, some input and based on that, we'll get an output. So which are the fields we are going to pass it is, we are going to pass document path, uh, document text, uh, DOM. Document path will get it as a source file. Document text and D, uh, DOM will get it from the digitization. And human validated data. So whichever the data we are going to validate it. and taxonomy and classified data so these things we have to pass it if you want to uh, train the classifier so once the classification uh, validate classification is done uh, next thing is extraction so uh, when you are doing the extraction we have different kinds of extractor so we have regex based ex extractor we have form based extract extractor 
intelligent farm extractor invoice ml extractor receipts ml extractor and purchase order related stuff so uh, you will get an uh, question like okay we have different kinds of extractor so which extractor do we need to choose so here uh, regex based extractor is like this is a kind of a basic extractor so if you want to uh, get the data based on the regex uh, code so we can use the regex based extractor one of the example is uh, you need to extract the data between the two strings so at that time what we have to do we have to write the regex code to get the data so in that scenario we can use the regex extractor farm extractor is like the position of the input file we are getting it so if you want to extract the data from that particular input file that data will be in the same position for every time so what we have to do we have to go with the farm extractor and the same way intelligent uh, farm extractor and uh, if you want to use for if you are if you know if you are going to read the data from invoices then we have invoice ml extractor or if you want to read the data from the receipts we can read the data from the receipt and if you want if you are getting the input as a purchase order we have an ml extractor for purchase orders also so these models are pre-built models based on the input file so whichever the file will get it we have to choose that particular extractor uh, to extract the data so uh, here uh, i can show you we have different kinds of extractors right so as i showed you which extractor will work for what kind of documents as i said we have structured documents we have uh, semi structured documents and we have unstructured documents right so uh, before starting your project you should understand it if you are going to read unstructured uh, documents what kind of process you are going to follow what kind of uh, extractor you are going to use what kind of uh, classification station you are going to use it so if you are going to get the st structured documents then what we have to do we have to go with the regex based extractor or farm extractor so if you are getting semi structured means um, this extractor mission extractor and generative extractor will come under the a based one and hybrid approach also we can do it so we have to identify what kind of document we are getting it and how we are going to do the extraction is it the rule based one or the a based one if you have a rules like reading the data from the two fields or reading the data from the same position at the time we have to go with the rule based one a uh, based means uh, as a human so if you get a file if i am giving the file and if i say extract this value means we will search for that particular value and we will extract it right in the same way we can try in our model also so we can model we can build it in the a based models or uh, data extractors and we can use it and one more thing is a uh, hybrid approach so a hybrid approach is a kind of uh, combination of both or uh, combination of both the uh, rule based and a based approaches so it, it is used for the uh, both the structured and uh, less structured format of documents so any questions still yet extract uh, extracting the data so we have covered almost four phases of document understanding so, yes i had a doubt regarding what is the hybrid approach basically i'm not getting that part so hybrid approach is like both uh, using the uh, role based and uh, aa based ex extractor here so how it is going to work if you have one of the example so in your project you are going to get different kinds of documents so one document is structured one document is unstructured or something so if you are getting the structured document so we can use a regex based extractor or farm based extractor instead of uh, wasting your a in its right so whichever the time you require to extract the data from unstructured documents you can use the a based approach to read it so before coming to this step we can do the classification there and based on the classification it will uh, navigate to the extraction phase it will work on particular uh, ba particular base of extractor based on the approach so in this way if you are doing in this way we can uh, save some a units to uh, consume okay so basically we are doing that part in the classification that how should we uh, perform that classification like how the classification happens the classification there is no rule based or a based in the classification the classification is will give the result like which format of file is it 
So if it is a giving the results as a receive, then what we have to do, we have to go with the AI based one. If the uh, classification is giving the results as an ID card, then what we have to go with, the, we can go with the form extractor, right? So that's the uh, way we can, we can do the development in the export stage. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, while using uh, machine learning extractor, see for example, field I given the P1 number, I trained the some samples. Okay. One sample having uh, work item P1. Okay. Field name, right? Yeah. So I trained, I trained with the P1 number. So okay. when using machine learning extractor, it won't be, for my case, it's not extracting properly. No, yes. No particular uh, document. Yes, which, got it. Which extractor I need to choose? So basically how the AI based extractor will work, we can do the training of it. So before, uh, once you get an input file, you are reading the, you are extracting the value based on the P1 number, right? So means you are teaching your model, like if you, if you are able to see the P1, then you have to read it. So in that way you are reading it, right? So in the same way, what you have to do, well, if it is not able to extract it, it can able to come into the action in uh, human in the loop. So there you can train your model again. So if not PO, if you are, if it is coming with some other PO, some other DTPO or some other PO also, instead of PO, if you are getting purchase order, also you have to read it. So in that way, we have to retrain the model. So every time the retrain should be happened, after some of the files coming in the same format, it will try to read the data from a purchase order also. Retrain means I mean the present validation human. Uh, yes, human in the loop. Present validation station or action center results can be in the format of CSV or JSON format. So we can use that uh, data sets to upload it into the ML models. So that will retrain your uh, extractors. Okay. Yeah. So here is it. here it is. So if you are missing some values, so if you are not able to read it, so means what we have to do, we have to do the uh, validation for it so once you have done with the validation we can uh, do the submit or approve so based on that this data will be moving to the model and we can get the data in the format of csv or excel yeah so here you can able to see same uh, data extraction scope Wizard, we have to use it. So here we have different kinds of uh, extractors. We have it. Then uh, here we can able to see the extraction, uh, try and extractor scope and try and classifier scope. If you want to try your uh, classification, if you want to try your extractor, we can ex extract it. And the last step is export. So just whichever the data we have extracted, then what we have to do, we have to export that data into the, uh, any one of the source file, or if you want to uh, save it in the CSV format or Excel format, we can do it. So this is the one of the uh, slide for how the end-to-end -end process is going on. So here we are going to start. So once we are going to read the entire data using document understanding, document understanding means it is a phases of different kinds of steps to get the data so once we got the data we need to take the decision so based on the decision we can upload it into the endpoint yeah uh, so here uh, if you are using the document understanding what kind of uh, business value will get it. So this kind of advantage we have it. So before going to the advantages of document understanding, I'll show you one of the example. So how we have uh, built document understanding to get the uh, data. So let me open the use case for it. So I'm going to explain about the uh, driver's license processing. So so before uh, starting this driver's uh, license processing use case, uh, do you have any questions regarding the document understanding? Like which phase, if you are getting confusion for any of the phase or how we are going to passing the values so that whichever the pass values we are passing it and where we are getting the input file, everything will be covered in this particular uh, use case. 
so uh, this is the project i have created uh, for showcase the document understanding uh, to read the data from the uh, driver's license so let me before running the bot let me show you which are the files i have it So I have two types of uh, ID cards here. I have two files, two input files you can able to observe. So what I'm going to do uh, using our document understanding, I want to read a couple of details from this particular, from this particular ID card. So this is a kind of uh, structured documents I can say. So I'm going to use, uh, uh, extra, I'm going to use the extractors to get the data from it. So, So uh, first thing is, if you have an input file, you want you have to know which what kind of fields you are going to read it from the particular input file, right? So for that, we have to create a template. So I'll show you the template, which are the fields I created it. So uh, here I have created, like here I created a group as a ID cards. And in the ID cards, I have created as a document type as a driving uh, driver license so based on that in that particular document so i created these fields so whichever the input file we are passing it from that input file we have to get what kind of document is it and the last name first name birthplace and these are the details i want to get it from the input file so when i show you so here is the files we have it so document type is driving license and dl number last name and the first name so and the date of birth so address so these are the things i want to read it so that's the reason i created uh, each uh, each label here so based on that label it will extract the data so when you are going to create the label we have to select it what which kind of label is it so is it text format or if you want to require number date name so anything we can get it so here i have extracted it in the format of text. So this is the template creation of uh, taxonomy. So once you're able to create it means you'll get to know like, okay, I have created this template, these values, I want to get it from the, I want to get it from the ID cards. So next I implement, just I created a basic RPA code here to get the file from the input folder because I have a files in the input folder. So I have a files in the input folder. So I want to get the files from the input folder. So that's the logic I have implemented here. So what it will do, it will extract that each file from that particular folder and it will uh, give the each file, this input files in the format of array. So I want to get uh, input files will get it in the format of array. So I want to get each file, right? So what I am doing it here, input files in the format of list so what i am going to do so instead of uh, reading the each file in the looping so i am uh, applying the counter to get it so here one of the condition i made it loop counter and input files count so just i am checking it uh, how many files we have it and the counter is uh, less than less than input files or not if it is a greater than we are going to stop the part so like completed the processing uh, documents. Uh, I had a question. Yes. Uh, what is basically uh, like taxonomy and schema? Like I'm not getting that part, like difference between them. Uh, taxonomy and schema. So yes. when you are created the taxonomy, it will create a schema. Like uh, the thing is you are doing it in one machine that you are creating a taxonomy as a manual in the UFR studio, you have created it. So if you want to give that particular taxonomy, how you are going to pass it. So if you want to in another project or if any one of the colleague wants to uh, use that particular taxonomy, so how we are going to use it. So we, you, instead of uh, sharing the XAML file, we can share the schema. So and if you are going to upload that schema in the taxonomy, so what it will do, it will give the ex ex exact values which we have created earlier. 
Okay, so basically it's for sharing purposes, kya? schema. Yeah. yeah, it is one of the sharing purpose. Uh, do you have any other comments, uh, Lahiro, on it? Um, yes, so just to add, I think I answered this question on the chat as well. So uh, these are like two different versions. Taxonomy, as Pradeep explained, um, it's, it's to define the documents that we are going to process in the workflow and the fields that we are going to extract and it's data types, right? So that is just for the workflow to work. And if, if you want to use that same taxonomy configuration in a different workflow, you can just copy that JSON file and use it uh, somewhere else in the process. But when you refer the, to the term schema in document understanding, that kind of refers to the machine learning models. Every machine learning model the free train model will have its own schema. What I mean by that is every model will have its trained fields that it can extract the data from. Like for example, if you take the invoice model, which is the pre-trained one that is available, uh, it has its own capabilities, right? So it, it, if you look at it, it can extract the invoice number, supplier name, and so many other fields. All that is given to you as a schema. You can even download that from there. So that is also another version that is used in the machine learning part that tells this is the capability of this model. And this can change from model to model. And if you're integrating a model in your workflow, like for example, if you want to extract data from an invoice, and if you're using the invoice model, you in your taxonomy you have a set of fields right so you are saying you you need the invoice number invoice date and address and the line items and so on and when it comes to the model it may have a lot more fields that it can extract so in the data extraction scope this is where you map your taxonomy with the capabilities that your model offer so there's a place where i think pradeep can show you uh, while he does the flow, um, there's a place where you can select these two and map it. What field okay. goes to the invoice number in the taxonomy and so on. Yeah. yeah. I hope thank that you. is clear. Yeah, yeah thank you, Lai. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, okay, what, you. yeah, thank you, Lai. So once we are done with the uh, taxonomy, we got to know which are the fields we need to extract it. So just I made a, one of the condition uh, to get the file. So is the file count is uh, less than loop counter or not. So based on that, we are getting the file. So once we get an each file, we are uh, reading the file uh, using the input files in the format of list and the loop counter will be the one first time. So what it will do, it will, uh, it will take the first input file and we are applying in the digitization we are applying the document UFR document OCR right so using this thing what we'll do whichever the input file we got it we are converting that data into the format of text so this doc text will give in the uh, particular data which we have it in the input file and it will generate the DOM so these DOM variable and doc text uh, variables will be used in the further phases of uh, document understanding. So in the digitization, what we have uh, used it here, we have used it document understanding. If you want to use it, use uh, any other Abbey OCR or Google OCR, you can uh, use it. So uh, once the digitization is done, uh, what we are going to do? So here I am not doing the classification in this sample demo because I have only uh, two work two input files I made it and the two input files are like uh, same format of file. So I don't want to involve the classification station here. So I have not uh, done the coding for the classification station. So once it is done uh, with the digitization, what we have to do, we have to do the extraction. So for the extraction purpose, I have used it, uh, whichever the things we have to pass we have to pass it these are the input document path and doc text uh, dom and uh, taxonomy so based on the taxonomy document type id document type id will get it from the uh, taxonomy when we created it 
and this is the results of extraction results and we are using the machine learning extractor model here so if you are using the farm extractor or rejex extractor these are the basic extractor to get it but if you are using the uh, machine learning extractor we have to use the endpoint and api so i have provided these things uh, here so then uh, once you are able to extract the data so i, I want to do some kind of uh, cross verify here so i am doing the attended automation here so attended automation means for each file uh, once we extracted the data before exporting the data i want to check it so is that particular uh, document understanding process able to extract the data as we expected or not so based on that particular uh, validation, I need to export it into the any one of the CSV or Excel file. So I am applying the present validation station here. The present validation station input or uh, document and the doc text, DOM, uh, taxonomy and extracted results, which we got extracted from the extraction station. So and here we can able to see the extraction results as an output extraction results as a output means whichever the data we have validated in the present validation as a human so that particular values will come under the extraction results so that we are reading it and if you want to extract the same values we can export it or if you want to push these particular values to the your model as a data set we can do it So then once we are uh, reading the data from the validation station, we are exporting it. So the extraction results here and it will give the form, it will give the data in the format of data set. So what we have to do, we have to do that particular data set and we have to write it into any of the CSV file or Excel file. So I have uh, done the coding in the form of XLSX here. So we can able to see the XLSX files in the folder of uh, data uh, output. So let me run and show you how it is. Uh, extracting the values. So it start it uh, started running. So it has done the class, it has done the digitization and it is, it has done the extraction. Yeah, so then we are in, we are in the stage of uh, validation. Now we are in the stage of uh, validation. So here what we are doing is we need to cross verify. So is the document type is uh, driver license? Yes, we got the accurate details here. And the last name, yes, we got it. Uh, just first name, we got it. And birthplace, uh, we couldn't able to extract the data. So birthplace, we can take it, which are the, like, if you want to take this particular value, then there is no value here. So if you want to give this none, it will uh, read the data as a none. And date of birth, we got it. Uh, sex, we got it. And nationality. Uh, if you if there is nothing then we can ignore it or if you want to add any of the point we can add it here and id number issue date so these are the values we got it so uh, what we are going to do if any value is missing and if you want to add the data we can add it or if you want to change any of the data we can uh, do the change for it so this is the use of uh, validation station and once we submitted it so it will create the one of the XLSX file for it. So in the same way, we have two files in the input folder. So what it will happen, it will process the first file and it will export the data into the Excel file and it will pick the next file and it will uh, export it and we got an, this present validation here. So we can able to see here, document type, we got most of the values got extracted from the bot. So if, if I think, uh, okay, I got extracted all the values and we don't want to extract any other values, then what we are going to do, just we are going to submit the present validation station. So the execution is done. So let me open the output folder. So these BKP files I have created earlier. 
so these files uh bot got generated now at 7 1 pm and 7 1 pm let me open so each file created based on the file name which we have passed it see this is one of the document so the document license last name first name whichever the data we have seen it in the present validation we got all the values here So this is uh, this is the kind of uh, basic understanding about the document understanding and how we are going to use it in the uh, real time. And once we are extracted, we can able to read the data from the Excel file and we can export it. So if you want to upload this data into any one of the website, so what we can do, we can uh, read the data from here and we can export that data into the any one of the application and if you have an integration with that application uh, directly we can do the integration and we can pass this value using uh, api keys or something so it it is a kind of it will save our time to do this entire processing so using these these kind of end-to-end -end automation what we are going to achieve so this is what uh, we are going to achieve in the business uh, sorry and in this is what we are going to save it in the business calculations so this is one of the example for it so if this process like getting the values in the zip format then so reading the document source then extracting the values using document understanding then finally we are uh, posting the data into the target application or any destination for destination application how much time will it take so as a manual work it is it will take uh for thousand uh, docs for a one lakh docs it will take approximately 20 hours twenty thousand hours but as a human verified it will it will take only one six six seven hours so if you are doing with the automation if you are doing hundred percent of human verified it will take one six six seven or if you are going to go with the fifty percent of human verified then it will go with the only eighty eight double three hours so this is what uh, we can expect it from the business so we can able to identify the differences it will it will make huge impact on the business when you are comparing the manual work and when you are comparing the doc document understanding to uh, do the process So uh, I am good with the uh, session. So if you have any questions or queries, we can uh, we are ready to give some kind of idea for it. Uh, Pradeep, I have one question. Uh, like uh, uh, yesterday, Vinu showed that like uh, we can uh, calculate the confidence, but he for the each of the fields. So is there any possibility that uh, let's consider in the Abbey after once the all the extraction has been done, it will going to give the percentage, whether it is a hundred percent or ninety percentage. Is there any possibility that we can get for the complete extraction? What is the uh, percentage uh, percentage confidence? And if it is less than eighty percentage, so that uh, we can uh, um, move that file to the action center for the human to validate. Uh, yes, that's what. So, do you want to get the confidence in the level of uh, each field, or if you want to get the uh, confidence based on the entire extraction results? The entire so, extraction. Yes, that will come. Uh, so, based on that extraction uh, confidence, we have to write the functions in the .NET. So, you will get the confidence. So, whichever the extraction results variable will get it right. So, using that extraction results, we can get the confidence also. Then we need to identify the which, how much percentage do we want to get it. So, if it is less than eighty then we have to navigate to the present validation station or action center if it is a uh, meta work confidence level then we can directly export the data into the csv yes that is possible mm, okay thank you uh, so we have the dotnet code right can you share if you can uh, yeah sure thing i'll share the workflow with you yeah okay. thank you so much yeah thank you hi pradeep yes please oh uh, yeah uh is there any way uh if we have uh of 50 or 60 documents same type and we uh want the extracted result in okay. one uh consolidated result or we refer to processing uh differently okay instead of uh processing it in different kinds of uh, excel files you want to process it in only one consolidated report right yeah as output 
yeah we can do it like uh, i am passing the file name as a uh, like input file name as a uh, exported file name so instead of that you can po post as a, a general name like uh, today's report and you can mention the today date so which are the items we processed it today so it will go into that particular excel file when you are going to start tomorrow it will create one more file and it will do the processing for it okay and appending the data only. yeah it will append the data to that particular process so that's based on the uh, customer like if you want to do it by every day or if you want to do it uh, every month so we can append it into the excel files yeah okay thank you Uh, sorry, your voice is uh, too low. Hello. Is it clear uh, for Lahiru and Vinu? No, oh, it is low actually. No. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Ah, yes, better. Yeah, Pradeep. Uh, actually, when you are extracted in the one particular field, uh, in the present validation state, so we yeah. have the option, right? If we, if the value is not present in the document, so we can choose the no value. Okay. Yes. So how I mean uh, uh, after extracting how we can uh, uh, give that uh, the field is not available in the uh, document how so, we can recognize that yeah so the thing is once you extract it we are uh, not going to export it into the Excel or CSV we are uh, sending that file to the validation station right in the validation station or the present in the action center we can do it so we can uh, do the edit of the fields or if you want to remove any field or if you want to add any data inside the field, we can do that. So Pradeep, this is Srinivas. Uh, I have a question over here. So once we develop the product and then we pour, uh, push it to the production, right? Yes. And then we need to provide them to the end users. So we'll be not doing the any present validation status or something like that. So yeah. how do we, uh, what license does the end user require? And uh, can, is there any, uh, so any here, steps that we need to follow or what type of uh, uh, user access that needs, that the end user needs? Uh, so basically document understanding is a kind of uh, long running workflows. It will work in the uh, mode of uh, long running workflows. So if you observe, so if you have input as a hundred files, so these hundred jobs will, if, we, if it is hundred jobs assigned to the action center, you can uh, do the uh, validation for any one of the job there. So you can do the validation for any one of the action and you can submit it. These particular things will work in the parallel mechanism itself. So I think yeah, uh, I agree, they, the, I agree yeah. on that. No, my question is, how do we give it to the end user once we develop it? And then we uh, we have we have I have around a couple of departments that uh, we do develop and then send it to the Got I mean, once we develop, we give it to the end user Got so it. that he can do those changes him by himself. Got right. It. Yes. Uh, Lahiru, we can do it based on the catalog and we can uh, give the access of only action center to the particular customer, right? So, yes. Yeah. Do you have any steps for that? I mean, I've tried checking in the documentation, but I don't find it. Yeah, uh, I can add some uh, some thoughts to that. So basically, how you do that is going through the action center, right? And in action center, mm -hmm. you can... Uh, you know, categorize things based on a catalog level. Now it is similar to your folders you have in your orchestrator, right? Right. Uh, so you assign, you know, different people to different folders and the, you know, like uh, folder can be for each department or it can be for different verticals. So likewise, you can keep that segregation in your action center. Okay. So that's how you can uh, add some people to a specific folder and you can, you know, uh, make them to validate the task. And uh, as part of the licenses, Action Center goes by per user license. That's correct. So we need to provide because they don't uh, 
uh, I mean, they just work on the action center. They don't, they don't uh, really work on the any other thing. So, does it require a license for that? Because yeah. they are just using the orchestrator, right? Yeah. So they need action center license. Okay. So that's a, that's a cost again. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, you know. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, I mean, uh, I have general question not related uh, with the uh, DU. So, I have question like, uh, suppose uh, uh, we have uh, attended license. So, can we use asset and queue? Yeah, you can go ahead and use assets and queues. Uh irrespective of you know of the execution attended or unattended you have that capability mm -hmm. to leverage your assets and queues okay but that uh, i mean attended license uh, uh, we don't have orchestrator license oh, that's fine only the thing is uh, you need to uh, you know be connected to your right tenant and you need to create those assets and queues okay Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, one question from my side. Yes, so, please. do you deal with uh, images or barcodes or QR codes? As of how we have seen, it will be extracting the text from the document. Uh, does do you deal with barcodes or other image formats? Uh, yes, image, yes. image format, we can do it. But for, from the barcode, I think I need to explore. Uh, Lahiru, any comment on it? Or can we do it any model implementation to get the data from the barcodes? I haven't tried it myself, but I think there are some uh, third party tools where you can just uh, send the barcode and extract the information from there. But I think from the document point of view, if you can detect the barcode and extract that as the image, just like what we do with signatures, right? Then that could be a feasible option where we can train a model to identify that as an object and extract it as an image and send it to another tool that can read the bar, the internal info in the bar. So that, that is possible. Okay. But directly to read that, I don't think that is possible yet. Okay, just considering an image, just uh, you, have a, you have a digital Im image or some of this, take up this example of a uh, passport or uh, driving license, what you have shown. Can we capture an image and save it as an image? I just I just don't need a person's image also because if everything will be related with the person. It will not be just in every document. We still not to have a text. We also have images. So can we extract the image of the person also? We can. Uh, but uh, that will require uh, object detection on the document. Um, just like how you, again, referring to the signature, just like how you detect a signature whether it's present or not in a specific region, we can apply object detection on, on the document and see if there's an image and extract that region and save it as an image. But you, you need to train uh, a small model to detect that. Okay, if required, we can use the conventional method what we use in studio. So we can just take up uh, everything and we can uh, insert this particular Im uh, image and save it as a uh, PNG or some format and we can export the yes. data. Yeah. Oh, okay. thank you, thank you. That's it. Hi, Pradeep. I have a question. Uh, yes, please, Shiva. Um, I have seen that uh, uh, in attended mode, we are using the present validation station. What about the for unattended? Uh, so in unattended, we can use the action center. Action so, center means how to assign the to action center in the... So we have the assigned task activity in New Path Studio. So using that assigned task, whichever the data we got extracted, we have to assign it to the action center. So what it will do in the action center, it will generate uh, actions for it. So okay. there we can do the validation and we can uh, submit it. Okay, means the user has to, uh, I mean, interrupt that, uh, uh, he has to save that uh, action and uh, after that only it will go for the next iteration, right? Uh, 
uh, no it won't so that's what we have discussed it so basically document understanding will work in the uh, mode of uh, long running workflows so mm -hmm. these uh, task will work parallel so if you have 100 tasks we are submitting one task now and if you are going if you are not going to do it for other one so what it will do it will complete that one and it will stop for the next one next one means anything like in the 100 whichever the one whichever the task you want to uh, do it you can do it if you want to do it 94th or 93rd or 80 so whichever the thing you can do it it is a kind of long running workflows oh thank you Hello. I think your voice is uh, too low for me. I think uh, I think we are good with this today's uh, session. Uh, I'll I'll share with documents in the uh, SharePoint or I can share with you guys through the mail. And we please uh, don't forget to uh, do the RSP for the next session. So, when you can you please share the link for the next session for tomorrow? Uh, yeah, sure. I already shared and I can share it again. Yes, please. So, yeah. please uh, do not forget to do the RSP for the tomorrow's session. Yeah. I have a small request before we close the meeting. My name is Julieta. I wanted yes, to please. find out if it's it's possible you demonstrate for us how to extract information from a handwritten document. I'm just curious to see how it it, it would come out. Uh, we can do it. Uh, we can extract the data from handwritten. Uh, but uh, we have to implement the code in that way to get that uh, data, and we have to use the models to extract it. So in the next session or uh, sometime I can I can give some kind of demo on it to extracting the values from a signature or any handwritten uh, data. Okay, I will greatly appreciate. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Thanks for joining the session and please uh, do not forget to do the RSP for the next session thanks everyone thank you thank you thank you, thank you.